money, I'm ready for war. Yeah. I just got 20, I'm running on empty. This mobile that came from my money is silly. I feel an envy, not trying to be friendly. It is what it is. If you want me, come get me. Whenever you ready, no. I was walking down a dark road, hard cold, all alone. I'm on my own, nobody better ask me for none. Remember, we were sliding in that four door Audi. When it's smoke, they get to hide and make them scary boys run. Remember when I ain't have it? If I want it, I can buy it. I ain't bragging, I can go and blow it back just for fun. If we gon' keep it real, I took a lot of L's. I know pain, I went through hell, but I still came on them. I do my own stunts, don't need a backup. Tired of feeling broke, I got my racks up. These four pockets full won't fold on me. How you claim me? Tonight, from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, it's Thursday Night Football on EA Sports. The Pittsburgh Steelers versus Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. It is a cold night in western Pennsylvania as we bring you inside Heinz Field here in Pittsburgh. They love the black and gold here in the Steel City. And a few moments ago, their Steelers emerged from the Heinz Field Tunnel. They're set. We're set as the Steelers are ready to do battle with the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play. They've certainly found their groove of late, winners of five in a row. And I think the sky's the limit for this team. They're playing the best football that they've played in a long time. The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in Week 16. Taking it about the one. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback from the University of Houston. It's Kyle Allen. Typically, he's been a career backup, but when given an opportunity to be a starter, he's looked awfully good at times, understands how to navigate the... From the gun, it's Allen. Over the middle, complete. It's Jenkins. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Still leaves him with fourth and short. Any chance you go for it? It's definitely in the back of my mind. In fact, I've discussed it with my staff all week long, different situations that I may want to go for. Where is the ball in the field? Do I have confidence in my trigger guy? What am I going to do? I'm also talking about my analytics department. What are the odds? If I don't get it, what's it going to do to me the rest of the game? Personally, I end up taking all that 
putting it in my head <laughs> and making a decision. And you know me, I'm probably going to go for it. Well, Trent, you want to make an opening drive statement. Yes, I do. Once I have the ball and I've got around the move, I don't want to just give up that easily. Here are the Bengals on offense, and here is Joe Burrow ready to lead them at quarterback. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. The numbers for Mixon last week, North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what, he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. On second and nine, Burrow. Open man is Higgins. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. You know what else you're looking for? It's a, who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early in the When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. Jonah Williams, former first-round pick, the guilty party. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Throwing again, it's Burrow. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Ward. And the Steelers are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. And that's what we've seen from this defense all year long, because they've been so good at finding ways to take the football away. And they just gave us another example right here. A strong defense, that's something you're going to need to rely on come playoff time. And this crew has got one. There's no doubt about that, Brandon. So with the Steeler offense on their way out, let's take a look at the playoff picture of the AFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it to each other supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, shouldn't take the foot off again. No, not at all. Play it all the way through. And I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. From the gun, he'll hand this off. It'll be a gain of five, but still about three yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. Allen. On the right side, caught by Green. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Calling a gain of three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender, but a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Too long for a field goal, too short to punt that in-between range, and they'll go for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And the Bengals will get the football back. And even though they didn't get it, probably the right call too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you pumped the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, 
the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. First down, here's Burrow. That'll be taken in there by Miles Boykin. A gain of six there on first. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Play action now, Burrow. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Second and 10. Burrow looking to pass. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Now it's Burrow. He finds his man complete. It's Garrett. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. So they'll wind up losing seven on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Well, as far as third down plays go, that's not going to be one where you say, hey, let's run that one back. No, I think right now the play caller, he's either circling that one or highlighting it or whatever to know not to call that one again. It's going to be a heck of a postmortem with the head coach to try and defend that one. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3-0. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. The things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And on that last drive, Whitford on fourth turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here. because if we The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. There's Sam Hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground. Oh, when you see a quarterback retreating away from the line of scrimmage toward the other goal line like that, usually doesn't end well. You're exactly right about that. Normally, if they're moving from side to side, they've got a chance maybe to get back upfield. He was trying to shake defenders and extend the play, but it doesn't work out very well for them at all. You need those extra yards on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Now you're digging a hole for your offense. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The Steelers send out their punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. Last week, a strong showing, up over 100, also two trips to the end zone. It's the kind of week that if you said, listen, I'll let you have this type of a game each and every week, you'd sign up for it. You wouldn't try and get too greedy. But let's face it, good runners always want to be a little bit more greedy at the end, try and squeeze out every last yard. He's going to try and duplicate that and exceed it in this game. They go play action with Burrow. 
Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Now Burrow. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. Taking it about the 16. A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And listen, these Thursday night games, they're tough on the body. You just played on Sunday, 72 hours later. Hey, it's game day again, but I have to think a Thursday night game in September much more preferable than a Thursday nighter in December, no? Well, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned how tough it is on the body. How about the mind? You're already tired, fatigued, right? Trying to battle for playoff spots. And here you have the quick turnaround. Now, the flip side is, if you take care of business, win that Thursday nighter, you go into a mini open week. Gives you a few extra days to heal up the body and the mind before you play your next game. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. So the shotgun snap to Allen. Open man, it's Preston Williams. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Here's Allen to throw it. He finds his man complete. It's ball. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Here's Allen on first and ten. He finds his man complete. That's Jenkins. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even ten years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Ross Blacklock. In there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Okay, was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big-time sack. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And out now, here come the Bengals. As mentioned, this one of the hottest teams in the NFL, riding that winning streak into this one. But now playing here on Thursday night, do you think that this helps or hurts their momentum? Well, ordinarily, I'd say it hurts the momentum because now you get that short week. But when a team's playing as well as they are, it actually allows them to down focus and only worry about themselves and less about their opponent. So when you're playing well, you just worry about the things you're doing well and let the opponent deal with that. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. He's going to let it go again. And a high throw there as this is knocked away down to the ground and incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. 
The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Oh my goodness, was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Take it on the midfield logo. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Johnson's got it complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. On second down now, it's Ball, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. We we'll always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Second and eight coming up. Shreds the tackle. And power running here down to the six-yard line. <laughs> Allen looks to throw on third and one. Touchdown! Juju Smith-Schuster, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers have taken the lead. for the point after. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A drive that time of six plays. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This taken in at the goal line. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Bengals drive about to get going. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. One seven three, the score on EA Sports. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Mixon with a first down carry. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. Ready? 
Burrow on play action. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. On third down, Burrow. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Amazing, perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. On first down, ball. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Tackle made by Tyus Bowser. Second and eight. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he is going to get the first down, it looks like, as he's up to the 12. Well, these two division rivals, the schedule maker gave them a couple of second half meetings this year. They met for the first time back in week 11. And it was the visiting Steelers who came away victorious, so they'll look to claim the season series with a win here in Pittsburgh. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Here's a handoff out of the gun. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. And now they'll throw with Allen. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Certainly worth noting, he's now one catch away from 600. He's at 599 in his career. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Hallett. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. A second and 10, a very chilly day here, but no snow. And I got to say, if it's going to be this cold, I want snow. <laughs> you should see Charles' face. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 
They'll run on first down. It's ball. Takes this to the 45. Not much space after that broken tackle. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Throwing now is Allen. Hitting Juju on the slam. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 34-yard line. That reception, his 600th NFL catch. Congratulations. Quite the accomplishment. First down, ball, and he'll be taken down at the 34. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Allen, trying to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. So the interception there, and Charles, I'd imagine that's something you can maybe live with in December, but not come January. And I love how you make the distinction there. You're talking about regular season versus the postseason, the playoffs. Because these guys, they've already clinched the playoff spot, but they know, looking ahead, when they get into the postseason, they've got to take better care of the football because turnovers in that situation, they really become magnified. Here we go. The Bengals drive about to get going. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Devondre Campbell flies in to blow that play up. He is proving his worth defensively. Getting the sack here, that comes after being named the AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance in last week's game. He's stacking games together, isn't he? I mean, you just mentioned what he did the previous week to be named AFC Defensive Player of the Week. Continuing to play at that level. And when you get that kind of confidence going, those kind of guys are hard to stop. To try again after the sack. Burrow throwing the out route incomplete. That's Higgins. The reception good for seven. It's third down. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. Looks like a nine-yard loss. And it also brings up fourth. But he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, standing just about on his own goal line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, like I can say he's looked pretty good to this point. So first and 10 now from the 30. Hands it off out of the gun. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Now Allen. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 15-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to, and he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Sam Hubbard 
able to record his fifth sack of the season. I don't know about you, but if I'm the offensive line coach right now, I'm having an absolute fit. This team that they're going against has three sacks, yet they rank dead last in the league in sacks coming into this game. Maybe overlooked them a little bit? Could be. I, I don't know if it's the scheme. I don't know if they've just gotten fortunate along the way. I have no real great answer for it, but we're seeing something you don't often see. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. He finds his man complete. That's ball. And he'll only get this to the 14 as he'll come up well short of the first down. Coming for the Steelers. The kick by McManus is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point's not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. To throw again on second down. Burrow. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. And go in the books is a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. The Bengals on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This is third and eight. Burrow will throw. Now Burrow loses the football. Defensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it, changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. Returnable here from the 38. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 40 now on second down, Allen. Back to back, good plays have him on the move on first down. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down.
Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now Allen again. He gets it left side to Johnson. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To throw, it's Allen. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the Bengals are going to take over here on the INT at their own five-yard line. As much football as we watch, we've seen this work many times. In the red zone, first down, take a shot at the end zone, and points result. In this case, though, give credit to the defense. They outguessed them, were prepared, and intercepted the pass. The Bengals going to take over late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. Now Burrow, down around his goal line. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now it's Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 41-yard line. Here's Burrow. Open man is Uzama. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. McPherson's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we reach halftime here in the Steel City with the Steelers on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we're into the final three weeks of the NFL season. A lot of races going to be coming right down to the wire. Before we get it back to you guys, let's check out what we have coming up this weekend on the Week 16 NFL Slate. In the 1 o'clock games, one that immediately catches the eye is in our nation's capital, a big test for the Washington football team as they'll match up against the Cleveland Browns. Good games in the late afternoon as well. We'll stay out east and highlight the matchup at MetLife Stadium, where it'll be the Giants taking on the Baltimore Ravens. And then finally, we wrap up the week with a good one on Monday Night Football between the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a defensive struggle. Which offense can break through in the second half? To find out, let's hand it over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Joe Burrow and the Bengals set to go back on offense. And boy, Charles, they have to find a way to just get him some time to breathe back there. He's been pressured throughout this game. And I'll bet in his mind he's thinking the focus shouldn't be on how many times I've gone down. It's where is it happening? Where are the breakdowns up front? They'll never say it publicly because good leaders don't do that. But they've got to figure out what's happening in the offensive line to keep people away from him so he actually has a chance to throw the football because so far that has not been the case. Five full sacks against him. Back to Mixon on second down. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. 
They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. The terrible towels here at Heinz Field out in full force. Here's third and long. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. T.J. Watt. In there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. 35 yards that time on the punt. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. And they had a nice little drive going last time through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about Hey, we've got a shot at points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come away with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? On second and seven, Allen. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Throwing his Allen on third. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Williams. Had a good job defensively. They stopped him short of the first at the 32. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. So they'll pass on what would have been a 49-yard field goal attempt. And they're going for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for it. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. On second down, it's Ball, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. To the air, Allen. Throwing the out route incomplete, it's Williams. A gain of six there on first. Throwing again on second down. Allen. And he's got his man on the out route. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. Halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Allen going to try and keep it. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. Well, that's going to bring up a big call now because he's unable to make the play himself on second down. Now you just have to wonder. Will they keep the ball in his hands on third down? This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? From the 
from the gun. It's Allen. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And in for the Steelers. Touchdown. Preston Williams, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is let you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. But a big-time drive in that situation. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Play action. It's Burrow. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Well, the terrible towels here at Heinz Field out in full force. Here's third and long. Pressure too much here. He's going to go down. T.J. Watt racking up sack number 12 for him on the year. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And for them, a touchdown, their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Johnson the intended target, but it's going to be second down. And meanwhile, Allen's throw complete there to Johnson. A timeout here as we got a player shaken up, and that's Johnson who's down on the field. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. third down ball and he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here too and he may get a few more tacked on for good measure well when you get an elite running back like he is sometimes you've got to employ the by any means necessary method to get him down yeah sometimes you're relieved even if a flag comes out but if you just get the hand up and you get it on the mask you can kind of get away with that, but as soon as you curl it around a finger or the hand, that's pretty easy for everyone to see, and they'll call that one every time. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. From the 27, Allen. Quick hitter here, it's complete. 
And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. Allen going to try and throw on third down. Open man, Smith Schuster, it's complete. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice is really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands, and oftentimes the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. Throwing on first down is Allen. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll make it a second down. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. He was able to escape momentarily in the backfield, but you could just kind of tell that wasn't going anywhere. You know, in the film session, he'll get a minus for not getting him on the ground by himself. But what the coach is really going to analyze, how fast did his teammates get there to help him? If one guy slows him up, everyone else better be there. And that's what they got on that play. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Allen going to throw. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. Well, you have to be aware defensively that you've got two goals because obviously you're trying to prevent the touchdown, but you're also trying to keep him from getting a first down as well. That time they weren't up to the task, and it's first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A great play there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. McManus's point after is good. And the lead is up to 18 now. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. They'll run on first down. Nixon, and a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Once again, they run with Mixon. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Higgins. 
Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Now Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. 